Hey, we're back again. <laughs> What's up, guys? Uh, it's Matt from RC Overload, as you guys know. Um, most of you, anyways. We are working on the Axial Yeti today, doing a little bit more of an update. Uh, going to show you guys some things that I've done, nothing major, but nonetheless, I wanted to keep you guys updated with this build uh, as it progresses. Now, done a few things. Let me show you. We've gone ahead. I've gone ahead and installed uh, hot racing hubs and knuckles. <laughs> Excuse me, just kind of went a little mind blank there. Full aluminum knuckles. If you guys take a look here, all right. These things are sweet. Now this is the full aluminum knuckle. Okay. Hot racing does offer another knuckle but it has carbon fiber arms on it, okay? The only difference is the fully aluminum, okay? The one that has the arm that's completely aluminum with the whole body here, accepts the stock drive shaft, okay? The stock axial drive shaft. Now, the other knuckle, the one with the carbon fiber arm, only accepts the hot racing upgraded drive shaft. All right. Now I got this one because it was the first one to come out, and I had no idea that it only accepted the hot racing drive shaft. So when I got it, I go to put my drive shafts in, and I'm like, wait a minute, something ain't right here. Nothing's fitting together. Now I originally bought these from RPP Hobby, and uh, so I went and did a little bit of digging. Come to find out. They, you have to put in a 5x11 bearing into this, as well as accepting only the hot racing drive shafts. Now, I didn't know that until I did a little more research on the hot racing website and RPP's Hobbies website. Um, and unfortunately, I just didn't want to go ahead with the upgraded drive shaft, as well as searching for a 5x11 bearing. I wanted to keep my stock drive shafts because they're perfectly fine right now. I'm okay with them. I don't need to upgrade them. They're good. So I waited a little bit because I saw Hot Racing was coming out with a uh, fully aluminum knuckle. So once they came out with that, I ordered it up and it still accepts the stock 5x10 bearing and still allows for the stock drive shaft. Now at a later date, I may go ahead and upgrade the drive shafts, but for right now, I'm going to stay with the stock one. There you go. Take a look. Now, as you can see, there is an angle to that. So if it's straight up and down, the axle actually comes down in a downward position. So you will need to adjust the whole knuckle and carrier uh, inwards more. But that's fine because when the truck's level, so isn't the drive shaft. All right. And for the most part, your drive shaft's going to be riding more up here than all the way down. For the most part. So they're pretty sweet stock design setup uh, the fully aluminum ones you guys take a look here where the rod goes into the arm it does have three holes here that you can put the uh, the screw through that's for different torque and tension uh, steering movement and all that all adjusting um, I'm leaving mine in the center because that's pretty much the stock position so that's what I did on the front end. The front end is now complete, ready to go. We can now throw on some badass wheels onto it <laughs> and um, keep going on with this thing. Now, the other thing that I have I did at the same time was I installed the Carter Fab sway bar disconnects, which you guys can see right here. These things are really freaking cool and they're simple. The only problem is I don't when I disconnect it, I don't know where I'm going to put the sway bar arm or this bottom link. And I'll show you guys. It's a little pin. Okay, looks like a body clip. Holds on a pin that you slide out. And actually, I got to do that to the other side. Two seconds. They're really tiny body pins, by the way. All right, you pull up both pins. 
and the whole sway bar is now loose. Now you can put it up somewhere and mount it up. The body does come down far enough, so I may create some kind of strap and hold it. Um, but my biggest problem is with these lower links, where are these going to sit that aren't going to get in the way? Now I could put them off to the side a little bit and get some kind of like Velcro strap or something to hold it in place. Um, I don't know, I'll come up with something. It's not like I'm going to be disconnecting these uh, a lot. I'll have like a video where they're disconnected or a video where they're not. So it's not like it's going to need to be a permanent thing. So I'll come up with an idea and see where we go with that. But I want the body on first and get a better idea. But nonetheless, pretty sweet. Simple little pin. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it that later. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this thing is definitely coming out sweet. I'm actually getting really excited. Get to go out and play with it again. Um, but there is one other thing that I am doing right now, currently, actually, in between the videos is the body panels. When I showed you guys the Carter Fab uh, aluminum body panels that I had powder coated gray by Warrior Armor, I realized that the plastic roll bar, it's black, but it's like a faded black. So it blends in with those uh, gunmetal body panels that I have. So I was gonna paint those up black, have it more of a prominent black, so they don't blend and you get more of a depth to the body. Um, and right now, actually, outside, I am painting those up. And you know what? I'm going to grab the camera here, and I'll actually walk outside and show you guys what's going on. So, hold on with that. But um, that's where we're at with the Yeti. Um, next video, I'm going to be doing uh, the tires and the rims. And trust me, those things are sick. Um, and I got a few pointers for that as well. So, quick overview. Hot Racing, they offer two knuckles. One accepts their own drive shaft, which I will put everything in the description box, you guys, not to worry. Um, their drive shafts, by the way, has a non-movement um, drive shaft, so there's no real play when it moves around in the uh, cup. It's all nice and tight and firm, but it still can pivot. So that's their upgrade version. The other one allows for the stock drive shafts. Um, with a 5x10 11 bearing, and that's why I went with the full aluminum, okay? So let me dismount the camera, get my jacket on, and we will head outside. Okay, you guys, so welcome to my backyard. Yep, it's my backyard. And this is what I got going on. Um, basic stuff, setting up, just hanging the things so they can dry. Now, I've already painted these up. Uh, I've broken down all the pieces to this so that it was a lot easier to paint. Um, these ones are a little harder to see, but you can tell that they're definitely a lot more black than before. Uh, again, these ones are all set. I'm just waiting for them to dry. But now I am working on these, the side panels here. Okay. Uh, hold on one second, you guys. So, as you can see, Let's try to get a close-up view. Nice and black now, which is awesome. I'll definitely allow that uh, carbon fiber, I mean, yeah, that gunmetal paint job on the body panels uh, to really pop a bit. But uh, I gotta finish painting these up real quick, apply another coat. So, um, yeah, hang on. So, I'm using Krylon Fusion spray paint. Um, I love this stuff for doing plastics. I know there's a bunch of different ways to do it, um, but this stuff seems to work great for me, and this is what I like to use. So, Awesome. 
All right, guys, so uh, that's it. Like I said, it was just more of a couple of quick little things I was showing you guys. Um, should have the body panels and everything all mounted up by hopefully next weekend. And uh, I can show you guys that. So thank you for watching. Again, this was just an update, and I was showing you guys some stuff that was going on. All right, thanks for watching, you guys. We'll see you next time.